Hey guys, behind me is a 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. It's been five months and 5,000 miles since we bought it. And today I wanna to bring you an update on our ownership experience. Is the Tesla Model Y worth your money? Today, I'm gonna to try to answer that question. Are you ready? Let's go. In this video, I'm not gonna show kids a car because I already did that in another video and I'm gonna leave you the link to it here. Instead, I wanna focus on some of the stuff that you have asked me in your comments, things that I like and dislike about this car, 5,000 miles into our ownership. Five months later and the love for our Model Y hasn't faded away. Um, that doesn't mean that this car is perfect, um, but I think that whatever it does right, it does it so well that it overshadows the shortcomings. What has changed? To begin with, we got the full self-driving subscription. It's $199 per month and it does make a difference. Is it worth the money? It all depends on your lifestyle and driving habits. It fits our lifestyle because we make a lot of day trips on the weekend, so navigating an autopilot is such a convenience. Remember, I don't think that it's real self-driving, so the name to me is an overreach, but it is an amazing feature to have nevertheless. Getting on the interstate and activating the full self-driving feature makes the trip very enjoyable. Lane changing assist works great and the adaptive cruise control is very, very precise. No lag at all. It keeps up with traffic even after coming to a full stop. This system runs laps around our prior Lexus RX350 because that one was very laggy, especially on bumper to bumper traffic. It was just not too fast to resume and it felt like I had fallen asleep on the wheel. Um, but having said that, I don't feel safe using it in the city because it takes an extra second when the light comes to green. So Sometimes I, I just get that anxiety that I need to go and cars get too close as well. So with this, I think that real autonomous driving is a far reality from us. I, I, it's not going to happen anytime soon. So in other words, we're loving the full self-driving subscription. And I believe it's worth a try since now you don't have to come up with $10,000 up front to have it. You can just get it as a monthly subscription for $199 and you can cancel anytime. Moving on to the wheels. I have never been a big fan of black wheels. One of the reasons is brake dust. Brake dust shows too much on black wheels, but in this case, because of the regenerative braking, you hardly used the brakes, so you don't create a lot of brake dust. Um, I watched this car about 10 days ago, and it's been over 300 miles, and the wheels still look fairly clean. And obviously, another benefit of it is that you don't actually use the brakes too much, so my guess is that the brake pads are gonna last a long time. But in the day-to-day -day life, it's just so convenient that the car looks clean even though I haven't washed it in a long time. Another thing that I really like about this car is the front trunk. Because remember, this car doesn't have a privacy cover for the cargo area, but you have this convenient, uh, decent-sized cargo spot here in the front of the vehicle. And here you can hide all the valuables. I mean, the car comes with tinted windows in the back, so it's really hard to see through the glass. But still, whenever I have valuables, I just throw them in this uh, little front compartment. And I also use it whenever I have carry out food, so it doesn't stink the rest of the cabin. I'm more of a sedan guy, so I'm always used to having a trunk in a vehicle. And because this car doesn't have a cover for the back, I just don't like to throw stuff in the back as much, unless I really have to, unless they're bigger items. But whenever I have something valuable that fits in the front trunk, I just use it like that. So I really like this feature. Some of you have asked me what is the better choice, the Model 3 or the Model Y. And honestly, I'm more of a sedan guy. I just bought this SUV or crossover, whatever you want to call it, because this was going to replace my wife's car. And it used to be a 2018 RX350, a Lexus RX350. And we kind of like the higher sitting position of a crossover. And that's why we got this one. But I would have been perfectly fine with a sedan. So is a sedan a better choice than a crossover? It's up to you. Maybe if you had a second vehicle that is like a truck or maybe like a, like a crossover, then I'll just go for the sedan because it offers the same features, but it has better range. And I think it's more comfortable. Also, it's a little bit faster, but not to say that I don't like the convenience of this rear cargo area. I hardly ever use it because it's just me and my wife. So we don't have a lot to throw in the car. Maybe when I go to Costco, but those items would have fit perfectly in this sedan as well. Nevertheless, if I were to use this, um, I have the convenience of being able to lower the back seats and look how generous this rear cargo area is. And then as some of you know, it has even more cargo spot right here. We hardly ever use it though, but I have picked up people from the airport and they always bring their luggages so I can put this, I can put them in the back and maybe like throw one of the seats down for extra convenience and extra room. 
and the, the luggage is in the back and the people fit on the front. So it's, it's, it's good to have. Now, is it worth the extra money? It's entirely up to you. Some of you have expressed your concern with road noise because I guess Teslas are known to have a lot of road noise. So I'm gonna be straight up. This is not a quiet vehicle. So if you come from something like a Mercedes or a Lexus, this is gonna be louder. Uh, we had a 2018 Lexus RX350 and the vehicle was quiet and it was smooth. This has a very rough suspension and also has very low profile tires. So it's a very unforgiving ride. If you put that together with the massive sunroof, it does not make for a quiet vehicle. It doesn't bother me, but I just wanna be straight up. This is not a quiet vehicle. If you want a quiet vehicle, look elsewhere. Also, do not believe everything you see on social media. I've seen videos about how poor the craftsmanship of the, of the interior of these vehicles is. It's not true. I have been very, very honest about the material choice of this car. And I have said there's a mixed bag of good materials and not so good materials. But as far as the craftsmanship, it's really well put together, it's sturdy. I mean, I only had it for 5,000 miles, but nothing has fallen apart, which is not the case with all the vehicles I've had. So it's, uh, it's well put together about the rattling. I have noticed a little bit of rattling on the back seat. I don't know what to tell you. Those are the things that when you buy the car, uh, you don't see them, but then you start noticing with just uh, everyday life how some things uh, start to pop up. And in this case, the rear seat has a little bit of, uh, of a rattling noise. I cannot spot it where it is, but this is, this is not a quiet vehicle. That we still continue to like it, but I just wanna be stirred up. Please let me know in the comments if you have a, te a Tesla Model Y or Model 3, if you have this same issue with the rattling backseat. Um, I remember a comment from one of you guys, and I remember that at the time I hadn't noticed it, so that's why I said I had not noticed it. But in five months, things start to come out, and. Uh, the rattling of the back seat is there. It's, it's minimal, but it's there. Is the performance package worth the premium? I'll be dead honest with you. Uh, we haven't used it that much lately. It was a novelty when we got it. I mean, it's supposed to be zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. And that puts this car in a special category with, along with cars that are very fast and most of them very, very expensive. But we, we don't use it as much as we used to. Yes, we still use it when we have somebody new in the car and we wanna get the reaction from a dead stop, but um, we have found ourselves not to use it as much. The Model Y is plenty fast on chill mode. The aesthetic differences are minimal, but I still enjoy having them. And one thing that you have to consider is that the long range gives you a little bit more range. So I have learned in time that range is very important. So those 20 something miles that you get extra from the long range, uh, Model Y, I think they could make a difference for some of you. So if we could do it all over again, will we had opted for the performance package? I say yes, but my wife disagrees. So Lucero, five months into it, can you hear me? Yeah. Five months into it, can you tell the difference between the performance package on our Model Y and just a regular Model Y we see on the street? No. <laughs> <laughs> At all? Oh no. El otro día que fui a cargarlo, uh, lo conecté y me fui, like I left, and then I came back and I was trying to get into a different car. It was $7,000 difference between the regular Model Y and the performance package. If we were to get it all over again, would you get the performance package or you would have just gotten a regular one? Regular. Let's talk about range. I haven't charged a Model Y in a very long time to full capacity, so let's charge it right now and see. It had about 70 something miles and it, we're at a level two supercharger station and I wanna see how long it takes to charge it completely and I wanna see if he has lost any of his range in the first 5,000 miles. Range anxiety, it is real and if you haven't had a, an electric car, you will be shocked at first. Um, I haven't been able to get more than 260 miles on a single charge and that's an, that's pushing it because I, I went pretty low the time I did it. This is my first day with the Tesla Auto Y and I had to go drop off my dogs at my sister's house, which is about 220 miles round trip from my house. And I left, I got on the road with and about 280 miles and I only have 19 miles of range to go. And I'm 1.5 miles from the charging station. Great. The math just doesn't add up. Sometimes I get hate um, comments that say that I just don't know how to get the most out of it. 
please show me because I have never been close to the claim range of 303. Um, I have gotten uh, one time I drove about 260 miles and I can safely get about 250 miles, but nowhere close to the 303 miles that is claimed by Tesla. Having said that, I've learned ways to charge it in a more efficient way. At least in California, you're gonna have supercharger stations everywhere. So I have learned not to charge it to full capacity. It is a waste of time. And the way supercharging works, you can charge up to 80% fairly quickly at around 25 to 35 minutes at a level two charger, but the other 20% takes just as long. So why waste your time, especially when you can just drive a couple of hundred miles and just charge it again for a fraction of the time. The best way to illustrate this is think of a gas car that is very efficient, but it also has a very small gas tank that you'll need to refuel every 200 miles. When we first got the Model Y, I was considering tinting the sunroof because of how hot it feels here in the middle of the day. I haven't done it. Some of you have recommended me that I use ceramic tinting and we're still thinking about it. I really like how spacey it feels with the massive sunroof and I'll hate to make it so dark that we can see through it. Some of you have recommended me uh, removable accessories that are available on Amazon and that could be an option later. I haven't had any service calls. In fact, most premium cars will have you bring it in for service at about 5,000 miles uh, for the first oil change. And well, one of the perks of having an electric car is that you don't have to take it in as much. Um, in the case of Tesla, it requires very minimal maintenance, so it just doesn't require anything at 5,000 miles. And that's awesome because I hate taking cars for service. I went with my friends to a Tesla service center and I was really disappointed with the whole operation. I just don't think it's a premium experience at all. I'll leave you the link to that video so you may want to check it out. Also, because of the way regenerative braking works, this car always is either accelerating or braking. And because of it, my guess is that it will go through tires like it's candy. We will see how these tires hold up in time. Low profile tires usually only give you about 20,000 miles of life. So my guess is this is going to be the same case for these tires. Other things that I would like to talk about that bother me to this day is the massive blind spots that I have around the B pillar and the C pillar on this car. Yes, you have a lot of cameras. Yes, you have a lot of sensors, but it'd be nice to be able to just look back and reference the actual reality of your surroundings. Me driving my old 1989 BMW is a very open car with huge windows and a, a low waistline. I understand that the reality of modern vehicles is that, you know, the high waistline and these massive pillars. In this car, I haven't gotten used to it. The visibility of the rear uh, window is still very minimal because of how sloped this, uh, the rear window is and the massive column that we have here. I haven't gotten used to it. Yes, I have been able to reference the cameras a little more, but it's still not great. The mirrors are still small. So it's not a matter of getting used to it. Some of you have also asked me if this touchscreen is not distracting. It continues to be distracting to this day, to be honest with you. And that's, that's something that you have to learn to live with. Yes, it's very practical and a lot of the controls, you can activate them with the voice commands. And once you get used to it, you don't have to look for knobs. Most of the stuff you can just command it with the voice commands, but it is distracting. You never get used to it. What does bother me is the fact that sometimes you want to just get access to something quick and if you're driving it's not very easy when i'm an autopilot it's, it's a little bit easier but it's still distracting so the smaller icons i wish this screen was a little bit more configurable so that i could get some of what i consider my my important um, controls to be bigger on the screen so that i can just access them but it's not, and it is what it is. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. It is a, a huge learning curve. And even when you have it down, it's still annoying to have to uh, get so distracted when you're driving. Um, one of the updates that I really enjoy about this car is that now you can, that the car reads uh, text messages for you. So you just press this button right here on the right and it will just read you the comments for you. Lucero says, all right, here we go. Distracting, yes, but at the same time, very functional. In summary, we still enjoy our car very much and we think that it was worth the price. And we wouldn't do anything differently if we were to do it all over again. The Tesla Model Y performance has been a cool car to us that does a lot of things extremely well. And we hope that it continues to be that way 
once the miles start piling up. Thank you for watching. Please like my video. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. Also, if you're considering getting a Tesla, go to my description box because I left you a referral code to receive a thousand free supercharger miles. And that's an amazing deal. I'll see you next time. I've been charging this car for over an hour and it's coming to the end of the charging session. So it's very, very slow. It's telling me that I have four minutes to go and I'm at 292 miles of range. Is it gonna charge the other 11 miles in the next four minutes? We're about to find out. Unfortunately, I really have to go. It says that it has 296 miles. So does it prove anything? Well, it does prove that it doesn't make sense to try to fully charge these cars after 80% because the other 20%, it just takes too long. So when I got here at about 30 minutes, I already had 80% water charge coming from about 73 miles and the other 20% is just taking forever. So I have learned not to dwell about it and just to come in, charge for to 80%, drive 200 miles and then stop again. As suspected, 297 miles of range, not 303. Something that I hadn't experienced in a very long time is when you fill it to capacity, the regenerative braking doesn't work. So the car keeps going instead of, like I said earlier, instead of always being like accelerating or braking, in this case, it keeps coasting. So it kind of freaked me out at first earlier, um, like a block away because it just wasn't slowing down and I've forgotten about it, that feeling because now it drives like a normal car and you have to use the brake pedal. So regenerative braking doesn't work when the battery is at full capacity.